Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and toxic relationships. This video comes from a question multiple people gave me or sent in to me. And the question is, I come from a narcissistic family. How do I introduce a new partner to my family? If you've got any thoughts on that one, drop it in the comments. I will provide my analysis of this one because it's not easy. So I'm sure this has happened for you. You come from a narcissistic family. You actually meet a nice person and here you are. So multiple people have asked this and basically the gist of it is, is that they've met someone, they've fallen in love with a nice person. Let's just assume the person is a nice person. Okay. Meet someone, meet a nice person, fall in love. And now you face the prospect of having to introduce this new partner to a narcissistic family system. What could go wrong? A lot. Now, remember, okay, we're going to keep fortifying this. It's not that the new person you've met is narcissistic. That's so far. The new person you have met has been healthy, respectful, kind, compassionate. So for you to roll into your narcissistic family system with someone who loves you or really is sort of all about you, empathizes with you, that's going to be threatening to your narcissistic family system, especially if they have typically been able to control you and keep you where they want you and devalue you and keep you sort of dominatable. This dynamic is particularly enhanced if you were a scapegoat or the truth teller in your family system or even other family roles like the fixer or the assistant who the family counts on to get things done. The presence of this new person, new partner in your life means that your family is probably not going to get supply in the same way from you because this new person is not only obviously going to have get a, quite a bit more of your attention, but this new person telling you that you're lovable and good means that your family's old tactics of manipulation may not work. You may have also delayed this meeting of your partner and your family as long as you could because you yourself had a sense of shame about how your family is or fear about how your family will behave when they meet this new person in your life or as they learn more about your relationship. So let's break this down. What are some things to be prepared for? Number one, you can expect that your family is going to pretty much put this new person in your life through a really uncomfortable and poorly boundaried interrogation. They will ask all kinds of inappropriate questions and feel, enti feel entitled to ask them and get responses. They will ask them questions about their lives, money, job, whatever, and may sort of get angry or baity if this new person in your life attempts to set a boundary. Number two, your family may insult, demean, and treat this new person badly. They may literally insult them to their face but may also devalue and invalidate them. They may gaslight them. They may ask them to do things that feel uncomfortable, like insults around believing that, oh, you, you, you ought to clean up this whole mess. Or they may make fun of this new person's job, name, clothing, accent, whatever. If this person who's in your life doesn't fit the mold of someone that your family would value, Maybe they don't make enough money or they don't have the right kind of job or the education or don't conform to other things that your family wants, maybe around religion or race or nationality, whatever it is, you do need to be prepared for them to mistreat this person. Or they may, number three, try to triangulate them and win this person over. If your narcissistic family can convert the new person in your life over to their cult, well, then that's going to work out real well for them because it's one more way for them to foster chaos in the system and for them to maintain control over the system, dominate you and invalidate you. So they may actually really try to win this new person in your life over. And this is tricky. If your new partner is clear on the messed up dynamics and listen to you, they should be able to be resistant to it and see it for what it is because you gave them the warning shot. If, however, they are on the fence and your family really does the full court press, 
then your new partner may waver and think, oh, God, they're not that bad. They're real nice. Be concerned at that point because that may mean this person is not getting it. If you explain this to your new, new partner and they're still falling for your family's charm, that's a major red flag. Number four, your family may tell this new person awful stuff about you. It may start as what feels like friendly, silly insults, embarrassing childhood stories, but really are passive aggressive jibes. You may find yourself in the tricky position of not wanting to overreact. So they just say, oh, we're just joking. And that's a gaslighting play. Keep that in mind. But simultaneously trying to set a boundary. It can also place your new partner in an awkward position of having to sit through this. Though here's a nice little life hack on this one is if the new partner joins in the roast, you may want to rethink this new relationship. Number five, your family may tell you bad things about this person or be critical when the new person isn't around or you are alone with your family or after you leave may send you text messages or call you or whatever with their unkind feedback. Again, this reflects that triangulation and isolation dynamic. They want to get you isolated especially if they sense that this new person has your back and that you may be getting stronger because of this new relationship. The things that your family says, shares with you may be lies, they may be innuendo, they may even just be insults. But the trauma bond that many people have with the narcissistic family of origin can mean that the family's words and suggestions can lead you to doubt your new relationship or feel the invisible pull to not want to go against your family. So what do you do? The best offense is a good defense. Number one, you got to prepare this new person in your life. You don't necessarily need to use the word narcissist, but give this new person a program so they know the players. Now, you may not even know exactly what to expect unless you've been to this rodeo before, but the game playing, the triangulation, the passive aggressive stuff, the manipulation, the invalidation, it all tends to be pretty typical in a narcissistic family. So you should know your family's tactics to prepare this person. Talk to this new person in your life about the lack of empathy, the entitlement, the arrogance and the reactivity. Talk to them about it and tell them that this is how my family is. Talk to your new partner about dynamics like baiting and the various family roles that people have. All of this can help this new person in your life feel maybe a little less shocked, maybe be less likely to personalize what's going on and also be less likely to fall into your family's traps. Number two, try to keep the visit something brief and fenced in. For example, a meal that will only take a few hours. Ideally, not in someone's house because that that meal is a meal is more likely to be more time limited in a restaurant, right? If it is at their house, try and have a clear backstop and an out time. If it is longer because your family lives far away, either plan on a hotel or if you do have to stay with them, have a backup set up in case you need a place to go. Talk ahead about it. Talk ahead of time about it with your new partner about how you're going to get out if things get too toxic. Number three, get on the same team with your new partner. Maybe even have some sort of signal system set up, a word, a wink, even a text that means you are setting a boundary or leaving. Maintain eye contact with your new partner so you can let them know you see what is happening and you become a united front and even have a validating person across the table from you. Now your family may sense that you are a powerful dyad there and try to insinuate themselves into there but the two of you can commit to being a team. Number four, have an escape plan. If things get really awful, have a good story that you're both in on about emergency or something to get you out of the hit there if it gets too toxic. Number five, debrief after the day, the evening, or the weekend. Let the new person in your life share their feelings, check in with them, and share your observation. The sooner you do this after this meeting happens, the more clear it will be. 
Ask your new person if there's anything you could do differently. And you can learn from each time you interact with your family, but make sure you talk about it. Frankly, the more the two of you set boundaries and don't fall for the family's baiting, interestingly, the worse it will get over time with your family, but it might draw you closer to your new par partner. Number six, be willing to be vulnerable. Assuming that this new person in your life is a decent person, share with them how this kind of family stuff has been challenging and how even introducing them to your family was actually kind of unsettling or frightening even for you. These, this kind of sharing with a healthy person can facilitate intimacy and closeness and your vulnerability can be a hedge against the shame you may feel about your family. Number seven, use the information that you glean from this visit to make future decisions together about how you're gonna handle your family. Ask your new partner how it was. Your partner may not have been as, been as bothered as you might have expected. So you can figure out how often you wanna tolerate that or not at all. You may feel more empowered to set boundaries with your family now that you have someone who is healthier for you right next to you. If you bring someone good, compassionate, and kind into your life, and you are from a narcissistic family system, it is very normal to put off a family meet as long as possible. And listen, you also have the choice to never do it. But that may not be tenable if you are still in contact with your family and anticipate a long-term or permanent commitment with this new person. Preparing a new person for your toxic family, shoring up your own resilience before this meeting, and being prepared for how much harm your family may try to do is essential. Preparation can go a really long way in managing toxic relationships, and this means preparing both of you. Honestly, if this, again, is a good, empathic, healthy person, and if they're able to see what you came from, they may very well even gain deeper respect for you for becoming a great person despite the mess you grew up in. And they may also understand some of your vulnerabilities with a clearer eye. It becomes an odd test. If they don't get sucked into your family mess and you are able to an ally with them and they can help you navigate these waters, then it becomes a real indicator that there are some real possibilities in this new relationship. So in a way, introducing them to your family becomes an interesting test for your relationship, even though your family is going to behave as badly as always. But being ready and understanding the range of things that can happen can really help you if you meet someone new and want to introduce them to your family, especially when the someone new is very healthy and good for you. Thanks again.